All right, welcome back to Lex Talk Oculus. Uh, welcome, Patreons. Uh, this is a Patreon exclusive uh, episode. Obviously, we are in the beautiful world of Walkabout yet again. We are in the new Mist map, which is out today as of recording. Um, we're joined by Edward, of course, the uh, the, the connoisseur of the map, <laughs> as amongst yes, as, yes, as yes. many others, of course. How you doing, Edward? I'm doing really, really well. Really excited to be back on Mist where I feel like I visited every incarnation that's ever had <laughs> over its 30 year life. <laughs> and it's really exciting to have contributed to one of those versions. It's like, well, you know, people who are really missed completionists, it's like, well, you got to play the walkabout version. You got to <laughs> see Mr. Yeah, to be a full my fan. <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. Um, Thank you for so much for coming back. Uh, it's good to have you. Yeah. Legitimately Absolutely. anytime. Love Love hanging out with you guys. (laughs) Amazing. Um, Well, to start off with the actual uh, Mist map, how long have you been working on this for? Like, how long has this been in development? Uh, I'd say it's been about the full nine months to a year, this one. Mm. Um, IP courses would, you know, you'd think, oh, they take a bit longer because there's more people involved. But Cyan was so supportive. They really uh we're straight away we said hey this is something we want to do and now we're like yep we love it we love what you're doing we'd love <laughs> to do this with you and they gave us a lot of freedom to do what we wanted yeah. um they were really yeah. kind really trusting they gave us so much support um mm-hmm. and so it was it was if so anybody understands fan, world building it's gonna be them oh beyond beyond it's so yeah funny how well mist works in vr considering there's a 30 year old point and click adventure game and they just sort of (laughs) translated it across and it obeys all the rules that you know for vr well designed that we didn't know were rules yet sort of 30 years Mm -hmm. ago just entertains me so much it feels like a match made in heaven in a way this this map because you know, walkabouts all about these experiences. These like, um, what what is the what is what the word that it is where you you, you kind of have storytelling without actually telling a story. Like it's just because of different objects around. I don't know if anyone uh, knows the, that. Like the going term through, yeah. is is a environmental storytelling. It's this big thing in game mm-hmm. design that yeah. you uh, small pieces in the environment add up to a bigger uh, bigger element. Yeah. And we just found out that, uh, that mm-hmm. the person who coined the term environmental storytelling was none other than Don Carson, who works with us. Really? He didn't realize he'd been the person to coin the term, <laughs> but apparently it's credited to him. And wow. we all just sort of cheered in the office when we found that out the other day. <laughs> That's amazing. That's awesome. Well, I... I... I was about to say, in terms of environmental storytelling, I think that's what something that that Mist does and Walkabout does really well. So it kind of just finally come full circle, full circle in a way where this is like a match made in heaven. It's like this Mist was always born to have an, have its own course on on Walkabout. Eventually, obviously, no one would imagine that back in the nineties when it came out, but mm-hmm. but here we are. It's, it's it's quite fascinating, and you've done a great job of capturing the magic of mist right and and the lore of mist um really great nods i mean we're not going to show you too much on this we want obviously everyone to, to play it but no spoilers i know dave's really really about that when in the patreon but you know this is um really beautifully done as soon as you come in um especially where we are right now in the setting you notice it oh, oh this is as soon as we start mist up you're right here you can see these puzzles on the side you can see the 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 building in there which you can go into and it's it's really well done and yeah once again you you can start where you start the game like the first hole is where you start missed you know the game exactly it really is a a solid one-to-one like walking around here Mm -hmm. you feel like it is to scale missed Mm -hmm. island yeah. It was, uh, Cyan was really, really nice and helpful in that way. They actually gave us a lot of their game files from the mm-hmm. Mist version they did recently for VR. They gave us uh, 
the super high resolution models of the island mm. and we use those as a blueprint and we rebuilt everything yeah. from the ground up you know for us the art but style, it did right? allow us to sort of yeah. have a perfect 3d blueprint yeah. at which point we mm. you know tore it apart because it had to uh <laughs> work for mini golf we went oh install that bridge over there blow out that wall it was <laughs> like sort of a home remodeling from hell mini golf edition yeah. <laughs> But you, That's with that cool. as well, you still capture the, the essence of it. And I, I guess you must have gone through quite a few iterations of what the layout of the course would look like before you fell into what we have today to make sure, obviously, you know, you're, like you said, blowing up walls, blowing up bridges, you know, putting things in different places, but you still want to make sure that keeps that, that missed feel throughout the whole game. And it really does that. And, I'm sure you went through irrita- irrita- um, iterations and go, you know, this is not working <laughs> whatsoever, right? And I guess that's the nine months scale, right? This is a, it's a tough process to get from where you started to what it's become today. Yeah, there was a lot of work there. Uh, Henning, who is our main course designer, who designs the holes and the feel and the basic layout of mm-hmm. things, I know he spent an awful lot of time uh, going back and forwards, and there was a lot of feedback this one was quite a sort of a universal team involvement uh you know saying oh i think this works i think this doesn't work and something that's really nice at mighty coconut is that we all are given the freedom to put our own mark on something so Mm -hmm. for example craig who is our sort of senior technical artist he's he's in charge of making sure that say the models that we build in blender you know go into unity and he lights them and puts the scene together um and he really liked the feeling of the original mist so Mm -hmm. there was a lot of the color palette and the water and the feeling which ended up coming from the 1993 version of mist Mm -hmm. uh same with sort of the the layout of the trees exactly whereas say the design of uh, the small pond there and sort of the a lot of the library, the new editions of the library come in the VR version of Mist. And it was, we just went with what we thought was the best out of each version. It was like making mm. a little theme park of Mist Island where we went, okay, right. what felt the most Mist to us? Um, the essence, yeah. And it would all tie together in our art styles. So we had a bit more freedom to mm-hmm. really distill it into what we enjoyed the most have you all had a chance to play with the folks from cyan uh yes we've done uh several playthroughs with uh different folks at cyan and they've been so so supportive Mm. so wonderful and really happy i've never encountered happier people in my life it is (laughs) faintly ridiculous yeah, I can't wait for the people who are really, really into Mist. You know, the the dedicated niche out there who pretty much play every build of it, every remaster that they've done, and such to to jump into this. Because, like you said at the top of the show, you know, this is now adds to the to the whole Mist repertoire. Now you've got another yeah. another game that they could play that that plays across it, which is it better be. Pretty, it's going to be quite special. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. But it's going to be oh, quite special for the people. The wiki. <laughs> I, I exactly. think you might be getting a page. I'll be surprised. But um, yes, <laughs> life peaking right here. I can stop. I can retire. <laughs> yeah, we, we I'm, put I'm a very lot of excited. things. Yep. Go on. For those crowds, there was a lot of consideration that went okay. There'll be a lot of people who love Mist who will be coming into Walkabout for the first time. There will be a lot of mm-hmm. Walkabout fans who just enjoy what we do who've okay. never experienced Mist, And so there yep. was an awful lot of playing around balancing to make sure that everyone mm-hmm. had a really good time. So there's, uh, yep. I mean, as a lot of people know, I have a weird sense of humor and I often like to hide bodies on the levels because yep. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> you know, try not as to do that with out. other people's <laughs> I, Yeah. Try not to do that with other people's <laughs> IP it would be a bit weird. So I had a really, really fun couple of days putting together and hiding Easter eggs and references to all of Cyan's mm-hmm. games. Um, mm. I think the only game I missed out on was Cosmic Osmo, which was mm-hmm. incredibly old. But I think just about every other game they've ever made, I've got a reference 
somewhere in this. So it's wow, cool. a different sort of treasure yeah. hunt. Not looking for bodies this time, looking for a bit of a love yeah. letter yeah. to the worlds that Zion has built. That's amazing. That's and true. I really love the mechanic that you brought into this. And it sounds like, okay, this makes a lot of sense, you know, for, for the mechanics, you know, for every walkabout um, course that you've always bring something new, whether it's a, a new mechanic or just a, a new way Wind. to, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, something like that, right? Um, and they've been implemented really, really well. But with this one, it, you know, you have puzzles throughout the whole course. You know, you have to have, activate switches and, and such and some in the right order um, to unlock the hole. And it kind of makes a lot of sense when you think about it in hindsight. Like, of course, this is going to be the mechanic for Miss. But how difficult was it to incorporate this new mechanic into the course? Because it's something that you've not done at all before. It's completely yeah. different. It's not nature. It's, it's, it's you're doing puzzles while you're playing mini golf. Because, you, yeah, you can't um, make them too hard or too easy. That's got to be a tough balance, yeah. Mm. Yeah, the most difficult bit is designing them so they feel right. This level, more than any other, has gone through huge amounts of gameplay revisions. Uh, normally, we try and lock down as much of the gameplay as we can before art even starts, because so much of mm. the whole design is the shape and how everything's built around it. This one, I mean, we still tried doing that, but it, we just knew that it was going to take really the whole length of development, there would still be yeah. optimizations because, uh, for example, I mean, look at the, the whole, this just sits on a pentagon. Um, and anyone mm. who knows the Mist series knows that the number five is very, very important. And so the actual puzzle itself, the gameplay changed a lot within the confines. It got refined, but we knew very early on, we got it refined to the shape and the sizing and the placement, mm -hmm. which is normally where you'd stop. But then we just spent the rest of the time. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of trial and error, yeah. it sounds like it, yeah, yeah, in this course to make sure it feels just right. Can you remember what was the first hole that was like designed, designed. Like, with the yeah. puzzles and such? Because I know the first oh, hole that you've sh shown was the one with the clock tower with the bridge. I think you've shown that at I the, um, the uh, what's the Scion? You showed it uh, off at Mysterium at Scion's That's it, yeah. Yeah. We, I feel like that one was the one that everyone had in their minds earliest. Uh, it's the mm. most natural progression from the existing puzzles to where it is yeah. now. And I also know it caused a huge amount of problems to get it to work. Um, mm -hmm. As you can imagine, <laughs> the, the game is, you know, we, we, it's already built. We're really well established. The code base is really solid at this point. And then you have to crack mm -hmm. it open and go, okay, well, we want every time the ball hits something for something else to happen and that has to sink and perfectly work. Mm. And do we want it that when I'm hitting my ball, do you guys, should you be seeing how See it reacts yeah. to me or should it be yeah. invisible and just, you know, be showing you your version. And so there's an mm. awful lot of playing around, getting that to work. And then of course, once you've figured out what you want, getting it to be incredibly reliable, which is how so it difficult. How does it work? Because uh, I haven't played it multiplayer yet. I believe it's it's uh, it stays invisible for you. It just it's it uh, okay. it just operates and reacts to mine. But that then and then I just see some the other ball. systems. Yeah, but in other yeah. systems we have say like something's moving. Uh, when you start your turn, uh, mm -hmm. the rotating and moving objects will sync in my view to how it appears to you. So I can see how your ball reacts to them, but puzzle gotcha. elements, they don't, it's there's an awful lot of back and forwards playing around. Mm -hmm. In this level, yeah. we also have interactable objects. Just with your hands, you can turn, flick switches, and um, the mm. like. And it's weird that we're going. Okay, well, should this be a gripper movement? Should this work? Now I think you just sort of point yeah. and hit the trigger, yeah, which you just, is um, trigger it, mm -hmm. which is less interactive but it actually worked the best for this game and how this game feels and the interactions that we've trained people to expect, mm. uh, which is, it seems backwards that we went, okay, in this VR game, interacting <laughs> a little bit more at a distance feels more natural, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. That's why we experiment. It makes Where sense to me the because I'm... interactions? I'm just... Sorry. Yeah, the interactions? They're 
yeah dotted around we have things. like switches okay. across and okay. yeah you can i know it's if it's a bit weird right because all the other courses you you maybe try and grab a glass or something maybe in the twenty thousand one one that we did last time when yeah. you were on you know, well, you sat at the table and you're like, I kind of want to grab the glass, but I just can't. It would be cool if you did. And then this is, is the first course where, yeah, you can actually press buttons and flick switches. And there's there's handles that, you know, there's, there's these handles that are dotted around everywhere. And for people who haven't played Myst and they just put all the handles, nothing happens. And they're like, I don't know what these handles are for, but that's the cool Easter eggs and the cool secrets that you've hidden amongst this game but i think you're right the way you've done it is correct because i i, I see samson's um giving it to is it your your friend's six-year-old or your cousin's six-year-old uh, about? oh yeah, yeah yeah my college roommate yeah your college roommate yeah so and then your college roommate six-year-old sometimes plays walkabout and he finds it quite intuitive and, and understands how to use it straight away so i think yeah. if you start including stuff that are foreign relative to walkabout then it could, you know, add an extra learning curve, and then people won't know how to press it and such. So I think it's the it's the yeah. right way to go to make it as simplistic as possible. Right. I think we ended up in a in a in a good place. I mean, it'd be weird if you know we released a nice ad. It's terrible. We should start again. Um, but there was, <laughs> you know, a lot of work that went into making it feel thoughtless, effectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you have? Um, did the whole team kind of play Mist before, or did you have like the odd person or two who's never played Mist, so you can kind of have that perspective when they go into the course and see if it works for someone who's never played the game and if it's still as fun as it would be for someone who has played Mist. I think most people ended up playing Mist before we launched, um, because while that perspective is quite useful, we do do sort of testing with external testing, groups, yeah. so we do have that sort of area and what we wanted internally was the feeling that we all Knowledge. knew this yeah. space this island you knew what was right and then you had mm -hmm. you know muggins over here who is an obsessive and someone goes oh what do you <laughs> think this and i'm going well the 1993 version was this but then you know in real miss masterpiece which was you know uh unreal engine 4 for windows uh 7 you know i, I don't think that was quite <laughs> the way it was you know sort of spouting <laughs> stuff no one wanted to hear yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah fair enough there's too, yeah, too many think... details samson you played yeah. mist or uh not? no no i i struggle struggle with mist uh, puzzles. i oh yeah it's like beyond it's like i can't even figure out what the puzzles are let alone solve the puzzles Mist is uh, tough. There's no like yeah. hand holding at yeah. all. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I just like I I bought the VR version. Um, mostly I think it came with like a Quest Home, and I was like, oh, I'm yeah. pretty into that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I've walked around the island. I did a lot of exploring. It's a very beautiful game. Uh, mm -hmm. but that's about as far as I got. And then I watched a video on the lore of Mist. And you must have recognized started. this then. Yeah. You must yeah. have recognized this. Oh, I recognized everything. It looked. It, it felt yeah. like I booted up Mist. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it feels like Mist. Yeah, yeah. Alternate yeah. world version of Mist. Yeah. yeah, let's 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 go with that. Um, and I, I haven't the done the version. fox hunt yet, but in terms of the fox hunt, without like giving anything away from you know people, was that quite fun? To, to create like what we were going to do in that fox hunt to have that mist kind of aspect to it <laughs> it's the weirdest fox hunt that we've ever done uh henning uh <laughs> designs the fox hunts they were named after a, a sort of puzzle he invented uh when mighty coconut was first formed on the island of belize when they mm. went on a like a trip and he invented yep. this puzzle and since then, it's been like it's his baby. We, you know, I do the like the putters <laughs> and balls, and no one could take those away from me if they tried. Same with fox hunts and uh, henning, and <laughs> it went wild. I <laughs> I can't spoil it, but this fox hunt is different. Yeah. Um, mm. I'm very and excited. It's worth to doing jump more. In. Yeah, than once. I haven't done that one yet. Yeah. It's worth doing more than once. That's a nice little hint there because there's no other fox hunt which you normally do more than once. So this is a... interesting, Edward. Yeah, if you've not done the fox hunt yet, um, definitely jump on that. I'm happy to <laughs> jump in that after. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, too. I love it. You can't see my smile, but I'm really excited for you guys to <laughs> uh, do the fox hunt. You got to get the uh, facial quest pro tracking in here so we can start seeing your smiles <laughs> and maybe blushes. <laughs> but um, I then have to go no, I... quest pro. <laughs> yeah. That's another. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's another yeah. conversation. Are you too um, jealous? <laughs> I've been I've been really impressed as someone who's also not really played Myth just because it's it's very difficult to kind of like sell. I always found with the VR version, I thought it was it was hard when I first played it because there was no notebook feature or anything like that, so you couldn't really write anything down. Um, I believe they've updated that with that now, but yeah, was, it's something that one of my housemates is uh, massive into Myth. He's a bit older than me. He played the the first Myth when it came out on the. I think it was on the Mac first, um, the 93 version. He's played it on here. And I put him into this um, this game mode yesterday, and he was flawed. <laughs> he was absolutely <laughs> flawed. And he, started, he just ended up not playing the actual game. He just wanted to look around and just fly around yeah. and think, wow, this this is like, to, to, see, to see his reaction of something that he played as a kid as a point and click, and now you brought it into this um, walkabout is is... It's very nice. It's and a real I'm world. excited to see what the reception will be like when it actually finally releases um, to the public. Yeah, it's, uh, we're really hoping that everyone has something they can really enjoy with this version of Mist because there was a ridiculous amount of love that went into it and mm-hmm. it's been the balancing act of making sure there's stuff for people who've never played Mist or never made it off the island, as it were. Um, yeah. and people who are diehard fanatics. So there's mm-hmm. hopefully something for everyone. Definitely. Is yeah. this, um, I don't know if you can say, but is this the last course for the calendar year? Or, or are you potentially trying to get something out before we end? You know, or, I'm if not If you can't sure. say, just I, say I, you can't I'm, say. <laughs> it's not even that. I'm actually not sure what our release schedule is looking like. Um, because we're always, you know, optimizing the flow. We're in a very mm-hmm. unique circumstance, which you don't normally get with game design, where we know how what we're making is divided up. It's just each course, and then it comes out, mm-hmm. and then it's there. And then another course. And it's sort of, while we do a lot of explorations and change things up for each course, because, you know, it's got to be fun, it's got to be interesting. Oh, good. We do sure. sort of, we can <laughs> sort of plan things out. He's gone. Um, Samson's disappeared. Yeah, I teleported. He I will be missed. Uh... <laughs> nice. I just wanted that pun hey. in. I accidentally, I accidentally hit trigger, so I went the whole one. <laughs> He's coming. Um, but yeah, yeah so I'm like, going to say it, no comment, not necessarily no, out of secrecy, yeah. but because I am uh, a big idiot and I'm grossly uninformed. On this you story. genuinely have no comment on the matter. Huh. I genuinely no have no comment. It's, uh, <laughs> my stages of doing des- of doing work on a level. I'm now doing a lot, sort of overseeing optimization. Um, with Mist, I was really lucky is that I was got to be a bit more hands-on and I ended up sort yeah. of doing a lot of bits from scratch. And so I can say, oh, I mm-hmm. modeled the Mist library and, you know, pat myself on the yeah. back. Um, and so sure. I've seen, like, since Mist, there's been about six or so courses that have passed by me. And so I'm thinking, I don't mm. know where the other teams are at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Been in your own That's world. Fair. You've got other courses working on at the same time anyway right so you can't just you know yep. just do mist for nine months then we don't have anything else for the whole for the whole year but um in terms of the actual puzzles um just thinking about it is that more of a collective thing in terms of the puzzles on the island people come with ideas and kind of brainstorm or is there a set team that kind of is in charge of designing those well something that i really like that seems to be very true of working at Mighty Coconut is that the best idea wins. It doesn't matter who it's come from. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just anyone can have a good idea. And if it's the best one, it'll make it in. However, I would be doing a disservice to not say that, you know, the puzzles really were, you know, sort of mainly Henning and Lucas. They were really, really... Mm put a lot of work in everyone else gave their feedback and went oh this doesn't play right or oh have you tried this but you know those guys were the ones who really s- figured it out they put in the hard work and to pretend it was something else would would be a disservice to those guys and, and the incredible stuff they've done do you uh, do you have a favorite puzzle 
A favorite hole, um, if you will. Okay, so it's a a bit non-committal. I really like uh, hole three, which is the uh, gears. Should uh, we head there? Sort of the mechanical ones over there. Um, just because it's such a, it's it it feel it's quite different, but it feels really like oh yes, of course. Well, this is how this would be set up. We've still got giant let's, gears there. They all move and they're wonderful, but it's it's really let's like head over oh, there. of course, this is how they do that. Nice. Yeah, the gear. So the gears behind the gears behind move when you press the button. When it, when the whole platform moves, the gears actually move. So it's nice because they're in sync with the actual uh, platform itself. So it feels like the gears are actually moving the platform around. The nice thing about this map as well is it's very similar to the Labyrinth one in a way where you want to keep playing it because you want to find all the extra Easter eggs that you've kind of placed and you may miss on the first or second, even the third run. Right, I feel like I'm you sorry, could did play you this. say you might have <laughs> missed? <laughs> yes, might have missed with a Y. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. Um, yeah, and I, I'm, and now I'm really excited to see the fox hunt as well because it just sounds like they're doing multiple times too. But yeah, I guess this there's, is a... uh, Ed, there's a lot of subtle details in this map, right? That people probably don't know about yet. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, little things in this one. So, Easter where eggs. Labyrinth was a huge scale, lots of character stuff. This mm -hmm. one went in a different direction. We really experimented with how we could mini golf how we could make it different how we could squeeze more in and so you know both of them were huge levels that took the same amount of work but in completely different areas mm. so you know for labyrinth yeah. me and the other sort of environment artists really just sort of poured our souls into that one really just non-stop just mm -hmm. putting out more and more and more work that we really loved this one it's the same amount of work but in a different direction. Very different. And I think but, yeah. you'll really it, uh, see and experience that in a lot of fun ways as you play through. It really mm -hmm. does feel like a new take on mini golf in in a, in a good way. Uh, it, it feels pretty fresh. I like yeah, it. I absolutely. really enjoyed And it's fun. Like all of our other levels, um, you know, we can't do cheats the way you normally do in games where you have like a room that's bigger than the other or warping around. The way the game mm. is set up, it has to physically work. So, you know, if you know someone who's incredibly rich, we could do this. We could build this as a real mini golf place. <laughs> we could make the best mini golf <laughs> in the world. God, that would be amazing. Elon a little theme. To do this instead of buy Twitter. No, no, oh, we, need, uh, we need Disney. So we can have these in the <laughs> Disney parks. That's what we want. We need Disney to buy this. <laughs> but um, yeah. um, obviously, Ed, one of the biggest things that you do is the ball design. Um, was there anything different to this approach to the ball designs? Were you looking at anything different? Or was it just more taking stuff from the actual game and seeing what you could play around with as, as cool design? And do you have a favorite So, so I got Oh, you God. Portion. I mean, th this, this is the... That's uh, a hard one. First level where we've had 18 graphical balls. Uh, for those who mm. played levels, you'll notice that, uh, as I've talked about last time, we have a very limited amount of resources to spend on them. So normally yeah. we have a couple of graphical balls where I'll do something really cool and weird, but takes up extra resources. And then I'll do a lot of patterned ones with you know interesting mm -hmm. color combinations More where simple. I'm going, okay, we can do something fun here, but a bit light and easy. Um, yeah. Well, at least easy to render. And for Mist, we did the full 18 as graphical balls. Uh, Cyan was super into those. They were really into the ball <laughs> designs. And this one, you know, we actually had really uh, long and intense meetings with them. Well, not meetings. There was just one meeting where we said, here are the concept art. And they went, oh, we love this, but no, not feeling that. Can we do this? And they were really, really uh, fun. It was a really great meeting. I'm, I'm making it sound you know, depressing and intense. No, it was a, it was a, it was a hurt. Um, we had a great yeah. time, and so it was a really uh, it was a really sort of fun collaborative one where mm. they really uh, wanted to you know put their mark on it. And now yeah. more than ever, I want a like a two D printer that can print a full you know golf ball in color. So I want them all <laughs> oh. on my shelf. Oh, that would be amazing. Be so Just cool. have like a little little trophy balls on on your shelf. Of, like of the ones that were designed. Yeah. yeah, 
we might, we might have to ask a couple of our Discord community members who are 3D printers to see what they can do, <laughs> see, see if they can make something like that cool. But um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think obviously boar hunting is massive in Walkabout. It's something that everyone does and, and always get excited oh to, to find out which new ones. I know, Samson, you, you just dive in just without playing the game, just to just to find all the yeah the actually balls, well right? we mentioned i was playing with uh, my friend's kid and he he gets really into looking for the balls and let me tell you it never gets old when you immediately get to the next hole and the first thing you hear is where's the ball on this one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that's so it never gets old we uh yeah. the ball, this one i was really lucky i got to hide the balls on this one and uh, mm. my thinking behind it was Mist was really difficult, so should the ball <laughs> hunt. I, yeah, so okay, I'm glad you say that, Pearl. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, I didn't even find one until hole, like, nine, I think. And I, I wasn't, like, looking, like, re- I was trying to just play through it, uh, but I was casually looking, but I, I could not find a single one in the first first half of the course. <laughs> yes. But it's good, though. It's, it's still a good job. Achievable. Challenge. You... You should be yeah. able to find them without flying. We try and make it so, you know, say, you know, if you're sitting down even, say someone, you know, is in a wheelchair and they want to play, you know, or a kid's playing, you can still find them. You don't have yeah. to fly. I was just really yeah. cruel. But this, it's still, <laughs> you know, it's cruel, but it's not still unfair. doable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I this. think it's been very satisfying when people find the golf balls, though. They'll be very satisfied, and I think that's with Mist as well. When you complete a puzzle, you feel very satisfied. So I, I appreciate I'm, that you wanted to capture that same magic. I wonder if uh, Inner Princess's video will have more views for the Mist course than <laughs> probably, uh, probably than that's going to be a yeah. popular upload. Yeah, <laughs> I would, I would assume so. It's interesting how you say you have all 18 is graphic balls and they take up more resources where I would assume obviously not being an actual developer, but looking around with everything that's going on, that a lot of resources have been spent on this course with puzzle mechanics and such. But maybe you oh, found yeah. some um, yeah, optimizable a, I ways. Mean, the, the balls have to work on every single course forever. Yeah. And yeah. they all have uh, one sort of material and texture sheet they can take from for the entire mm. game. Uh, we don't mm. know how long that'll be. And so I have one texture sheet that I can fill with stuff that I use to paint on the balls and sort of stamp yeah. them on. <laughs> and once that runs out, we're done. We can't do yeah. <laughs> any more. So that when I say resource intensive, I mean I just sort of used up more space on that sheet than I normally would because we did um, 18 graphical ones instead of, say, six. Yeah. Um, but they yeah, they but i mean they have to work forever you know no matter how many people are in one level together playing the game they still have to work so mm-hmm. ah, it's all a balance yeah. act okay so edward just before you go i kind of wanted to speak to the redesign that you've done in the back here um we were actually mentioned this one when you came on the podcast uh, about a month ago how what are you going to do when you've got so many courses right um and i guess this is your solution you've now allowed you to you can scroll through and there's also they're kind of categorized between like the lost cities all in one as well if you wanted to just see that pack and the jewels burn etc and such um what was the idea about this was this just uh, was this the the logical step or has it did you go through different iterations there was a lot of work in getting this to feel right and it's one of Mm. those things where there's always a lot of playing around everyone feels it should be a bit different um but yeah the shack was getting a little objectively hilarious um (laughs) the way it's set up when we're playtesting the game, we have all the courses that we're working on sort of unlocked. And so we just rotate all the way around and (laughs) sort of out to there. And you had to sort of wander off to find which sort of level you were Mm. testing today. So this is, this makes a lot more sense. We knew we couldn't keep growing the shack indefinitely, although the shack is significantly larger than when the game first released with four levels. So, mm-hmm. And of course, you know, there was a, a very small ball table and mm-hmm. you couldn't choose putters or, you know, change your profile. And now it's 
expanded. Yeah. As the game's Although, expanded, the shack has expanded. Yeah. Yeah, she's put on a little weight, but you know, she's looking good. <laughs> she's looking good. Um, I, yeah. I still Although, remember, she's looking healthy now. I still remember this game. I think when I first bought it, it just had the four courses, and I was like, you know, it's it's pretty good. It's uh, you know, it could it could use a little bit more content for the for the amount of money, I guess. But uh, it's definitely got a good base, and and boy, boy, it's like <laughs> beyond your money's worth now. Like <laughs> ten ten, I can't even say it. Yeah, tenfold. It's crazy. That's yeah. a good place for us to be. That's a good place. If everyone you know is having a good time. And we can still exist mm-hmm. as a company. It's a perfect place. You don't want to get, you know, you don't want to go further than that. You want just yeah. everyone to be happy. Yeah. Absolutely. Although, I mean, I, um, I'm looking yeah. now that I've got all the putters, you know, for future levels I've worked on unlocked and they're just starting to clip into the wall over there. So <laughs> still got some more expansion to do, I think. Yeah. You need a, a club I always, to honestly... Yeah. I always thought that you were going to go a different route and have how you have like most of the courses are in the middle here, but then like the Lost Cities and the Jules Verne will have their own like shack just over here, like smaller shacks. But actually, like you said, you don't want people like trying to dart around the whole map just to try and find out what they want to play. You want like the central hub where they want. So this is why I don't design the game. Uh, you you come up with a great idea. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, we we talked about all that. We've got so much concept art. I keep saying at some point mm. we have to release a sort of a coffee table book uh, about yeah, concept yeah. art. Uh, yeah. Before we built the new island, you know, we mm. were still or we were already thinking about this. And one of the thoughts was, what if um, we had multiple shacks? Here was the one which looked sort of like a costume booth for your profile. You know, here's all your putters and all the balls that you've unlocked. What if yeah. this one just has lots of pamphlets of different places you mm-hmm. can travel to and visit, which is our level select. Mm. And weirdly enough, in the end, a, just a big menu is easier to read. It, it might feel a bit less fun. It, it feels like a more boring solution, but mm-hmm. it feels more natural and people don't have to think about it. They yeah. don't have to go, yeah. oh, okay, wait, let me explore through all these things. It's just, it's there. It's instantly readable by yeah. everyone of all ages and we're yeah. not here to play the game of solving a menu. We're, we're here to mini golf. <laughs> so anything that no, stands in the way has to be cut off. Yeah. I they definitely agree. And I like the, the way that you've, time. you've added like a feature section where we have now missed on the right hand side, because obviously it's the feature course, but um, are you planning to maybe just have this as like just a feature wall? Like, hey, this is the 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 new Halloween mode, for example, and this is like just a, just to a incentive to get people to to view what it is or what the new modes are. Well, you can see underneath there's lots of different options, so it's an area we can play around with. And of course, our you know the community is so lovely and so open with you know how they feel about things. And, you know, some gaming communities can be really negative and aggressive, but not the walkabout community. Everyone is so kind mm. and so understanding and they know that we're trying to just make the game the best. And, you know, some sometimes people go, oh, that's okay, but have you considered this? And, you know, sometimes they're right. It, the yeah. best idea wins, extends to <laughs> everyone. The community. And so it's, yeah. you know, it's a thing, you know, we'll try it out. And if it works great, then it's fantastic. If it if we come up if something you know there's a better idea, we'll do the better thing. You know, just yeah, that's fair. It, that's fair. So it this, makes this, it sound like not fun. There are a lot of meetings to figure it all out, but you know, <laughs> still take whatever's best. Yeah, yeah. But that that this this is not center stone. You know, maybe next year there's another solution. You go oh, okay. Actually, I like this one better. Let's redesign this but again. It's not not like something. Well, I mean, stone. next but year for now. By this time next year, there's going to be so many more courses. We're, we're working on courses <laughs> yeah. that are releasing Quest three. in 2024. And not even, we're already yeah. working on the 2024 courses and not even early in the year 2024. Uh, wow. Wild. wow. <laughs> that is wild. You know, yeah. we're, we're so much further ahead now because we were able to stretch out the team. And mm. uh, yeah, those will be fun. That's things. exciting you know, though because there's a great roadmap. So, yeah. It's the first time I'm getting like Crash Bandicoot vibes, you know, from the first time. 
Yeah. Oh Only a goodness, grim yeah. walk about island. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, final thing that I was going to ask, not on the DLC, and once again, feel free to not answer if you're not sure, don't, don't have an answer. Any more news on the mobile app? Also, oh, yeah, so I that's remember what I wanted to ask. I remember this. Yeah, the I, mobile app was planned for around this time for Mist, but any any idea or nothing to share yet? It's one of those uh, things. I think I might have said it last time. Is that the last ten percent takes as long mm. as the previous ninety percent? And I yeah. am not directly involved with the final optimization, so I look at it and I'm like, well, it's it's basically done. Um, <laughs> but of course, there's just a lot of Q and A making sure it feels right. And, you know, there, there right. is the element that it will never quite feel right, especially if you've come from VR, because you're like, but yeah. I'm not there and I've got this tiny window and I can't quite see everything I want to see. And so it's trying mm-hmm. to make that. It's just going to be different. Yeah. Work. And we're trying to find the balance of things. I'll, yeah, I'm not quite sure what our planned release date is. I, it feel to me, it feels done. But of course, yeah. you know, I actually know there's a huge team doing a lot of work on it yeah. that I'm just not seeing because I'm on the other side. That team might not think it's going to their life here. Maybe. They're going to hear yeah. this and I'm going to I'm going to get a real sad <laughs> face just sent to me on our Email. messages. Not angry, just a sad <laughs> face. <laughs> well, well, whenever it comes out, I know some people in our Discord are highly anticipating it. I think... I think Dr. Hero in the Discord mentioned it the other day where his he got his dad to play um walk about mini golf um and his mom wasn't that keen. I think it was Dr. Hero. Uh it might have been Dave. Um, I don't remember. But um anyway, but the, the mom yeah, was yeah. like, okay, this is cool, but I don't really want to play in VR. And you could see the mum playing walkabout with the family um through the mobile the app. Phone. So I'm sure whenever it yeah, does that's... does come out. People are going to be very excited. That's the dream use case, really. Uh, I think you'll mm-hmm. find, I mean, anyone who's played the VR game, they're going to play it and they're going to go, oh, it's there. It's good. It's just not as good as the VR game because it mm-hmm. yeah. just works better because you're of really course. here. But it, yeah. but I mean, you know, I've got a huge family. I don't have a huge collection of VR headsets. And so <laughs> yeah, to be able exactly. to all play together. Mm-hmm. But everybody be, has a mobile you know, phone. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like if you can if you can squeeze cool. it out before Christmas, that would be perfect. But oh, we don't want to give pressure. <laughs> whenever it's done, whenever it's ready, I'm you're you sure, seem to be um, applying pressure. Yeah, yeah. I said, I've no got pressure. the pressure. Said, no pressure. <laughs> the pressure. <laughs> no, but, dun, dun, but dun, Edward, dun, dun. Edward, thank you so much uh, for coming on again for this um, more of a shorter uh, episode. But um, I really appreciate it. I'm so. Um, excited to see, like I said, everyone's community response, whether the played mist or the not played mist, um, of what they think of the course, because I'm sure they're going to love it. Once again, we go yeah, through all of these one. courses that we have on the board here, and all of them are hits in their own way, you know. So, um, congrats to you, congrats to the team for making another a fantastic, fantastic course. Yes, oh, fantastic. Thank, thank, you, thank you so for much, and thanks for having me. Okay. Bye, Patreons. Thank you, Dave.